So the uh, 86th annual Academy Awards for tonight, and um, based upon more requests for um, Oscar videos, much like last year, I will be talking about it again. Um, I mentioned before that I'm not uh, a big fan of the Oscars. I don't think that it's a particularly exciting award because it's kind of always a um, strange accommodation between two interests, between the popular choice and between the critical choice, and they meet somewhere in the middle with an acceptable option. Um, also, I don't feel terribly qualified to talk about um, the Oscars when I haven't necessarily seen all the film nominees, even all the film nominees for all the major, major categories. Uh, so what I'll be embarking upon is talking briefly about the Oscars as I see them, just a few tossed together opinions that aren't wholly authoritative or anything. Um, but I will have to say that compared to last year, where I was kind of irritated about all the choices, and particularly compared to years prior, like the year the, the King's Speech won, which was just such a disappointing year for Oscars, this year was okay. You know, uh, starting with the nominations this year, they immediately made better choices. Um, and while I wouldn't necessarily agree with all the major choices, I would agree that they honored filmmakers and artists that have had respect coming to them for a long time. Um, I think that the major point of having a, of having Spike Jones nominated for an Oscar, um, having Alfonso Suaron, having um, Steve McQueen. Uh, I mean, you look at the nominations this year, they're putting people into the nominations that haven't been getting nominated before, and people have been asking why these very talented, very um, skilled artists have been kind of left, um, left behind. Uh, and so there's a lot of things to talk about. Um, starting out with the, unfortunately, I think the bottom of the list, which I think is kind of criminal, they put near low on their list of significance. Um, I'm looking at their list right now. Um, best original screenplay goes to her, by Spike Jones. I'm a huge fan of Spike Jones. I love his music videos. I mean, I remember back in you know '96, uh, my dad's computer had uh, Spike Jones's Weezer music video to Buddy Holly loaded on it, just preloaded. Um, and I remember looking it up on Wikipedia one day and being familiar with his career. Um, he's done some really fascinating work uh, in a variety of different mediums over the last few years. I think one of the most criminally underrated films of the last few years is his adaptation of uh, Where the Wall Things Are, which I think is just delightful. He suffers from the fact, of course, that it's a movie about childhood, and so it's really a movie for adults, but they advertise it as a kid's film and so then best adapted screenplay was 12 years of slave which you know to be honest to take 12 years of slavery and make it into a viewable film without quite honestly simplifying and patronizing and turning it into a mess is certainly a task to be commended um as we move up the next choices were the right choices um Visual effects and sound mixing and uh, sound editing, those go to Gravity, as well they should. Um, big fan of what Weta did in The Hobbit. They did amazing things with Smog the Dragon. Um, and without being disrespectful to them, they've kind of had their day uh, for those achievements. Those achievements have been recognized. I think people will all agree that they're the best at what they do. But Gravity did things with effects in storytelling ways that have never been done before. And for that, they are the achievement this year in visual effects. If you want to look at like just bit for bit the most reliably amazing special effects company, you are going to be talking about Weighted Digital. But Weighted Digital, as amazing as they are, are sort of instantly recognizable as amazing special effects. Um, the best work they've done is for stuff like Gollum. Um, effects where you look at it and you never notice the effects, you're just into the storytelling. Um, and so while Smog the Dragon is an amazing piece of visual effects work, um, 
you immediately know that it's, you know, it's an effect. Whereas with gravity, you're looking at something where it's so a part of the storytelling that you don't remember. You just somehow in your head just forget that it's impossible, really, to shoot a film like that. You know, pretty much everything in gravity is an effect. And you never think about it. You get into the storytelling. You get into the the, the, the content. And it's, it's beautiful, beautiful uh, effects work because it's for the story. So uh, moving on, we have films I haven't seen, you know. <laughs> You have the short films, you have stuff like that, you have original songs. Um, Gravity's soundtrack won um, for best soundtrack, which is a great choice because it really works with the lack of sound in the scenes where, because of the lack of air, there's no audio. Um, great Gatsby won bit bits for, you know, design stuff, which I don't. I don't like Basil Luhrmann films. I don't like how he does films. I don't like how he treats period subjects. And I didn't see The Great Gatsby. It got bad reviews, and I don't like his work, so I didn't see it. But I think we'll all agree that if we're going to pick one thing from a Basil Luhrmann film to be impressed with, it would be his affection for bizarre, brightly colored, strangely flamboyant items. And so I can kind of understand why they got that. <sighs> Best Directing went to Alfonso Suaron, as well it should. A genius auteur of a director who has not received the sort of glowing praise that he's uh, deserved. I mean, he's gotten it here and there for uh, Children of Men and uh, you know, Prisoner of Azkaban and just other odd bits like that. But he hasn't won the sort of the big respect um, from the Academy or from other awards in spite of being very well respected. Um, cinematography, just gravity. Interesting question. Uh, cinematography for a movie that's so largely digital, but it's true. It's brilliant cinematography and it has it coming. Um, moving up the list, we have uh, Best Supporting Actor for Jared Leto. Um, kind of a predictable choice, but at the same time surprising because he is one of those sort of Gary Oldman figures where we all know that he's a terribly talented actor, albeit sort of a less doing less work these days, but he hasn't been receiving this particular type of um, praise or awarding before. Um, so it's kind of nice to see this happen in this way, because you know, when Gary Oldman was nominated for Best Actor for Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, it was almost a tragedy that he was nominated because he hadn't been nominated before. And he didn't win, and so it kind of broke the, the legacy of being the greatest actor who's never been nominated for an Oscar. So if you're going to ruin that sort of legacy of like the under-respected actor, then they need to be respected. Kate Blanchett won Best Actress. I didn't see her movie, but I heard it was great. So good, good for Kate Blanchett. I'm an admirer of her work, so that's fair, I think. That's, I mean, that's an opinion that's not worth much if you, you know, you haven't seen it, I guess. Um, I think one of those big, uh, great comeback stories has to be with Matthew McConaughey winning Best Actor. Because he's having such a sort of a golden age right now. For someone that we've all laughed at, we've all pointed out how we don't think he's very smart or whatever it is that we think about Matthew McConaughey. He had kind of a career slump for a while. His failure of Sahara and other movies like that just kind of dropped him into no man's land. His period where he dabbled in too many bad romantic comedies. And then that whole like weird Texas guy that seems to be kind of smug but kind of weird. Like, you know, sometimes his personality is off-putting to people. But when push comes to shove, he's an amazing actor. And in the last three years, he's come out with product after project after project that's delivered and demonstrated how talented he really is. Um, and so it's really fun to see someone that's sort of gone out of the limelight, like Robert Downey Jr. did, um, like uh, Ben Affleck did, uh, and just see those sort of people that we'd all kind of written off as has-beens and see them, you know, come back um, and prove us all wrong and really just demonstrate one of those sort of underdog stories in a weird way. Matthew McConaughey is going to be an uh, interstellar this year, which would be very exciting. 
Interstellar, which is you know Christopher Nolan working on a script that's been worked on by Spielberg. It has scientific you know relevance and the fact that it's going to be shot by the same cinematographer as Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy and Let the Right One In and all those sort of um, European films is going to bring that into the American forefront of the way to shoot images. Um, on a side note, Bond 24 is looking for a new cinematographer. I can't remember the guy's name right now because it's some super duper cool Scandinavian name. Um, but since Roger Deakins won't be shooting that film, I think that's who should be coming in on it. So if anyone's watching my videos, like Sam Mendes, maybe think about that. Maybe uh, fork out the big bucks and get somebody that amazingly talented on board because without um, Roger Deakins, that's who you should go with. Or, uh, you know, Robert Elswit, but no one, or, or Yeoman. There's a few great cinematographers out there, so you're not without options. But without Deakins, you will need to be getting someone really good. Um, so, and then best picture choice. Um, here we go, Steve McQueen. <laughs> That's been kind of the theme of these Oscars this year, is people that have been really well respected the last couple of years by sort of the minority opinion by people that really know they're good film, but haven't, but they don't have the sway in Hollywood or awards of this kind or this sort of thing. Um, Steve McQueen, like, he's been the guy to watch for a few years now. He's made some amazing stuff. Um, he's effectively the reason why Michael Fassbender is becoming a household name. It's his, you know, Fassbender and him work together, I think, on every film that McQueen's put forth so far. But then, you know, Brad Pitt coming along, sort of putting him under his wing and saying he believed in this project and making this um, a proper statement on slavery. Um, unlike all the sort of lame, cheap, patronizing, poor historical pieces that come out every year in which you kind of trivialize slavery by doing it in such a silly way. This film tackles it in a you know heavy-handed way in the way that McQueen does with all of his pictures. Um, and to take him from sort of the lesser-known sort of snobby elitist film snob category into that A-lister director where he belongs, um, it's a really nice move to make. It's nice to see that happen. Um, so, Oscars this year, Oscars will never be the, def the definition of what makes film great because of that compromise, as I've mentioned before, between the popular choice and the critical choice and meeting in the middle with sort of a safe choice. Um, Gravity would have been a great movie to pick. Her would have been a great movie to pick. I haven't seen Philomena, but I've heard amazing things about it. Wolf of Wall Street, quite honestly. I think that shouldn't have even been nominated. I think that that's one of those sort of homage to Scorsese, apologize to him for all the years that they've snubbed him. Uh, not really in the running. I think there's another nominee. I don't remember. I could look it up on my phone, but that would take a while, so I won't do that and waste your time. But yeah, so Oscars. Oscars from the year 2013. Not bad compared to sometimes. So um, let me know your thoughts. Um, ask me any questions you have. And I guess we'll do this again next year. So here's hoping that 2014 turns out great. I haven't seen the Lego movie yet, but I've heard that that's like shoe in for best picture. So Lego movie, Lego movie, Oscars 87. Um, also, Love the love the musical montage at the end with various different musical pieces. Having John Williams uh, music in there is makes any Oscars moment better. Um, Steve McQueen, great director, not as good at giving speeches. Um, Ellen DeGeneres, funny lady, but she's been funnier before. Like you know, maybe funnier sort of on a daily basis on her own show, but you know. You gotta do what you gotta do as a comedian. You can only, you can only wait for the inspiration to hit you. Um, like, have a good night.